All right. What's up? What's up, people? Um, welcome to Formlessness. Formlessness. <sighs> Formlessness podcast. Last episode was me um talking through the um peak the come up, the peak of the come up and the peak of the peak coming up into the peak of a um, hypothetical acid trip. So if you want to hear those um, emotions getting worked through, check out the last episode. Um, I'm just recording this because I don't know what else to do with myself. I am terribly depressed because... I need to, uh, I don't know what to do. I want to make this show be something that I am proud of and feel, um, I want, I want it to be real. I don't want it to be something where I put on any sort of facade um, the same way I feel about my normal real life. However, in both this show and normal real life, I feel like I've been in this situation for so long that I don't even remember. It feels like it's been forever. Maybe it has been my whole life where the things that I feel as a result of my environment uh, create a feedback loop where I can't really get out of those feelings. What do I mean? What do I mean? What do I mean? I mean, I'm too lonely to make any friends. I'm, like, so in need of being social, just having someone to talk to, that I can't, anyone I do talk to gets uncomfortable by the obvious need that I have for that, and I know that, so everyone I do talk to, I feel this sort of pressure to not show how much I need uh, human connection so I become very tense and strained and I it's impossible for me to hide my deficit of human connection no matter how hard I try and it results in whoever I am talking to becoming uncomfortable and then projecting whatever judgment or fear they have, which is usually far worse than the reality, projecting that onto me due to their uncomfortability. And then I not only feel all the things I would feel normally just from my situation, but I also feel the pain and the hurt of being judged and viewed as you know, whatever the fear that someone has of me is, you know, maybe they are afraid I'm going to hurt them. I'm a murderer. Maybe they're afraid I'm a rapist. Any of these things, I seem to have sort of some, some kind of magnetism towards people perceiving me in this way, not because I've ever done anything like that, like, it's crazy. Like, I look at my actions. If I look at my actions over the course of my life, the things I've actually done, I have not done anything bad. I'm, but however, like, because of the deficit of human connection and love that has been a theme my whole life, my body and the sort of it's like I should be those things, you know what I mean? It's like I should be a, a really bad person because of 
the situation of my life, circumstances. But I'm not. But my body is the body of someone who's got, who's had the situations that I've had. And so therefore, even though I'm not, even though I haven't turned to the dark side, you know, I haven't ever incited violence or harm against all the people who have done it to me. I haven't ever, I haven't done any of this stuff. But just because it's happened to me so much, it creates this loop where people perceive me as that and I don't know how to get out of it. The same thing that's is going on with this show that's been going on forever, like the only thing that I hold on to and care about is being true and genuine to how I feel and communicating that in a way that is honest and straightforward. And because almost nobody does this and m almost the entirety of all societal culture is based on the opposite of this, which is to hide how you feel, to present yourself in a certain way because this has happened because of that in, uh, you know, it, as well as my, um, natural, you know, what am I saying? It's like, because I'm not naturally, because I want to express myself uh, truthfully, and because my truthful expressions are bad, in quotation marks, or negative, or sad, because it's like, I can't lie about how I'm feeling. That's the only thing that I have to hold on to, is my truth. But then when I express that truth, it just compounds the feeling, because it creates more judgment, more rejection from the people who perceive it. And this is something that I've been trying to combat and deal with for so long. Um, and because as much as I consciously know this in my body, I still, you know, try to do everything I can to be, to get what I need which is human connection. Um, and so I have, you know, I have a really hard time staying true to my feelings when I know that when, that it will most likely result in judgment and um, rejection. So, but then it's like, it's such a strong force that need to be liked that I go against that and I do try and put up masks in the moment or present myself in a certain way, but it creates so much internal conflict um, and self-hatred in me that I don't do a good enough job of putting the mask up to ever really get anything good out of it. And I also, not that I would want to, but, it, but I also don't do a good job of staying really true to my own emotions and my own state because I it's so painful to be judged and rejected. Um, so that's where I am right now. I really don't know what to do. Um, I'm really grateful to be able to talk because for so long the pressures of this and the pain of people's judgments of me has overtaken my ability to speak or to love myself enough to even say anything. So I'm grateful for that. I also know that when I really embody my true passion, my true emotions to the point where I don't even think to look at how people are perceiving it, that is when this whole thing evaporates and when I truly go all the way through this cycle and complete the cycle and fulfill the cycle um, by staying true to my own emotions and staying embodied in the experience of them so strongly and so 
holistic, like so wholeheartedly and with so much just completeness that the perceptions of other people fade away and I don't stutter or shield or make myself small to try and be accepted by people. And then this whole thing, people do like me and people do, I do feel comfortable and I do have a way of um, processing all this energy. Um, and there's been like a few times where I've been able to work myself into this place or develop like a, 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 a roadmap or a thing to get to this place um, in, in like a recurring way. Um, but I've done, I've gotten to this place like two or three times. And then each time as I've grown in expression and strength and power, someone has, people have, I have started to see how, you know, what I just said, how people, I do start to feel like I'm clearly being who I am and people are actually perceiving that as what it is. But then every time that's gotten to a point where it also has triggered more people or triggered people in a more intense way. And um, that's what originally happened and what sort of started this whole cyclic, cyclical relationship of life where I started building my self-love, my self-expression capabilities, and then someone really used, really fucked me, really used that against me, used my words against me to distort them and be, yeah, and, and basically like ruined my uh, social group and um yeah and that's just something that was so hurtful and so scary to me that i i haven't really recovered i don't i'm so afraid it's just like this relationship it's like this immediate relationship between me being able to feel good and be myself and me needing to push through the fear the very real, the fear and also the reality of people being triggered by my freedom of self-expression and my empowerment of self-love, um, because it happens all the time. People are very broken and wounded by and large in society, and when they see someone who is expressing themselves in a way that they don't feel capable of, which I re I mean, I relate to that so much, you know, it's, there's been so many times, I mean, there's miraculous, like the, the, even just me being able to talk now and some of the ways I can express myself now in, on just a daily normal basis, there were years and years and years where I was trying to express myself in these ways and, and feeling completely incapable of ever being able to perceive myself in a way which would allow me to to express myself in these ways. Or, you know, just to simply be happy <laughs> and, you know, to say a joke or to be smiling when I'm saying something. Like, these things, these transformations feel so impossible and they can be so, it can be so hurtful. It can be so, it can hurt, it can feel so painful. It's not hurtful, but it can feel so painful when someone sees someone else doing this. I mean, for me, yeah, like for me, it's just like, I still feel this way about beautiful women, you know? It's like, I, I, I get, I feel so, I get so, it triggers so much pain in me sometimes when a beautiful woman will talk to me about something and I just feel like, you know, it's so much easier for her to say, to be like, oh, well, yeah, just, just go out in the street and dance around and laugh and, you know, work out your body that way. And it's like, yes, that's, that's right. I should do that. But 
it can be so painful for me as a white man with a broken body to hear that from a beautiful woman with a healthy body. You know what I mean? Like there are these cultural societal realities that exist that are not even or fair or healthy. And it can be so painful to, to see someone else's freedom when you don't feel free. And I really feel like my entire self and life force has been tested to the max and from every possible angle has been very overtly attempted to, to wait, <laughs> there's been overt attempts from every single angle uh, to destroy that sense of self that I have and again it's this paradox where on one hand it's like I'm grateful that I can talk about this and know this because I haven't lost myself but at the same time it's like I, I am so I just want to kill myself so I mean so often I'm in this place of being so frustrated by the fact that I know myself so well and I've done so much to exfoliate and uncover that relationship with my self-expression and yet the journey of doing that has been so painful and hurtful from these real sources like that i i even though i've done this it's like i can't reap any of the benefits or i can't fulfill the cycle of it or i can't do anything it's like I mean, that's where I am now. I don't know how to approach or talk to anyone or create any sort of social situation or human connection because all of the natural ways that I know how to do this through my passion and through my joy have been so mangled and distorted by the reactions of other people who are triggered uh, in their pain and who have chosen to try and destroy my light because of this that now I don't feel comfortable I, I, I don't know how to access the natural way of being that creates what I need I don't know how to make friends or lovers or even just have a normal sort of benign conversation with an acquaintance. Not to mention the fact that my need for human connection is so great at this point that it exists as a very large subconscious energy for everyone I meet and regardless of my approach, conscious even if I could, like, know what to say to have someone hang out with me or something, it's like I need it so much that it creates people just being, you know, uh, tur turned off by it. Um, so I really don't know what to do. I feel the same with this podcast, just in the podcast realm, where it's like, to me, what is the best thing for myself and for everyone in the world is to be as honest and open as possible. And yet, my life has been full of these difficult situations, and when I'm honest about them, it creates uncomfortability in the listener and potential judgment from the listener and turned off needless literally when you know difficult things are talked about it's not easy to listen to and then it just sort of create recreates itself again where it's like i just feel so afraid it, it you know it, it it becomes so hard to to f complete the cycle which again when i can fully allow myself through these things to exist completely without 
shut down or tempering or mm, anything when I really just let it go fully and just fucking let it all out completely beyond the point of no return and beyond the point of you know, uh, holding anyone else's perception in, in my contextual awareness, this stuff does come full circle and these vibes do shift and I am able to truly process and heal myself emotionally, which is like the point of what I want. This is why I want to sh make a podcast and share it is to show, uh, is to is show how people can do this for themselves and just by example and also by like literal me saying like you do this to to your, for yourself make your own podcast you know you don't have to put it out but talking through these things is the way of healing them and allowing them space to move and in our society the 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 acceptable way of doing this is through therapy but that if you're someone who is really sensitive or highly intelligent or has taboo pieces of themselves uh, that need to be, in, you know, uh, if you're if you're any if you're anything but the most normal person, therapy, going to therapy or getting therapy is not a simple or easy solution in my experience or helpful necessarily you yes there's you know you can find someone potentially that is a real match for you but it's not just like every therapist is going to be able to you know it's not the things don't work that way this work is very personal and subtle and sensitive and truly, we have what we need within us to heal ourselves if we just allow ourselves to speak to ourselves in this way out loud, connecting through out loud verbal, true, you know, talking out loud, you know what I'm saying, talking out loud <laughs> is like, that I believe needs to be journaling is really great and you know talking to yourself in your mind is great but talking out loud is is what sort of connects the ethereal and emotional and physical stuff all together and really allows things to to move process through the body so i'm just in such a deep frustration because the intent this is my intention with making this podcast and with my life and with literally everything i ever say to anybody has the same intention behind it and being caught in these negative feedback loops of incomplete cycles and just distorted reflections of rejection and judgment is heartbreaking I, I i still don't i'm just i don't know what to do i don't know what to do i need to create i mean there's just like these things i that are just right there in front of me that i need i i, I just don't know how to open myself up into genuine vulnerable true communication because my need for acceptance and love is so great it's not necessarily like a need for acceptance in like a, in sort of a distorted unhealthy way like i just need human connection and because most of my childhood was spent not being treated humanely not being treated as a human by the people around me I now feel incapable of creating situations where I am able to have human connection and see myself as a human or someone worthy and deserving of being treated kindly. And it really continues to manifest itself in the same things of you know, me, me not being treated kindly, me not being 
treated with sensitivity or respect or being, you know, I'm just, I, I'm not a bad person. Everything I do, I do my literal best to balance and heal myself, to have a healthy body, to be kind and uplifting to everyone around me. And I, I still just feel complete, like, I don't know how to overcome the karma of my childhood and the scoliosis I was born with and the, like, nerd neck that I have from being so depressed for so long. And it just keeps recreating itself. It keeps representing itself. Like, I'm, tr I'm just now starting to gain feeling in my chest. But still, even, I just am aware of, like, I have such little chest space in my body that I, I just feel like I normal people look at me and want to sort of start conversation or create like a social thing but then I just can't be normal about it and by and like as soon as I try to you know connect that energy and, and make a you know start communicating with someone there's just like something that happens in my body language that just sends this wave of judgment and discomfort and rejection towards me from the, uh, the the person and it's so painful to experience this over and over and over and over and over and yet I mean my only hope is to just like keep doing it but I don't know. And then it's just like, I have such a large, you know, it's just like, I'm going to put this podcast out and then I'm probably going to hate myself and feel bad about myself even more for putting this out and having it be heard and having it be listened to. So... When will it end?